Hi, it's Darius Barzande. You just don't find a lot of good information on the three levels of awareness. And I'm talking about the conscious mind, the subconscious mind, and then ultimately the superconscious mind or infinite intelligence. Now, I found out about this through a lot of years of studying and reading, and obviously as the host of UL Revolution, these topics come up all the time in our interviews and what we're doing with the show. But my deepest bit of wisdom about these three levels of mind came from my work as a hypno hypnotist and going through classes at Omni Hypnosis under the tutelage of Gerald Kine. He is a master hypnotist and one of the things that I learned about was really how these different levels of the mind operate. And I wanna share that with you today. And I also wanna give you some tips to access these and understand the language of these different parts of your mind and really your beingness because if you add it all up, the composite of these three different layers or levels is really your full complete being. Well, our first level of awareness really is this thing called the conscious mind. This is what we're aware of at any one moment in time. So it's our ideas, our thoughts, our feelings, are memories that are coming up through like a stream of consciousness. So whatever you're thinking about right now that you're focusing on, that is in your conscious mind. And because it's so focused on what we're thinking about right now, as you can imagine, that's a very narrow focus. A great analogy that I read once was that if you were just wandering around a dark room and you had one flashlight that you were shining at different things in the room, whatever the flashlight is shining on, that is your ability or your level of awareness to see what's in the room at any one given moment. And that's like, you know, about this big or however big the beam is. So it's very narrow. And once that consciousness or that flashlight is no longer focused on that particular group of objects in the room, it's not really in your awareness, right? It's just what you're focusing on in that moment. So it's very narrow. The other analogy is if you imagine an iceberg, a lot of people will tell you that icebergs, what you see above the water, this little bit that juts out, could even be several hundred feet high, is usually pale in comparison to the giant body that's underneath the water. So the subconscious mind is really what you are aware of in a moment. Another analogy is, let's say, a library, right? If you had a vast library of books that was like several halls large and you had but one table in the library and that table could hold maybe like five books and on that table you've picked your five books and you're looking through them well the table isn't all the information in the library it's only what you're looking at right now on the table and that really is you, what you are thinking about right now, what you are doing, your day-to-day -day tasks, all of that is not the full enormity of who you are. In fact, it's a very tiny little bit. So what makes up the rest of you? Well, the other part of it is, as you can imagine, your subconscious mind. Now the subconscious mind is not necessarily below the conscious mind. It is though below our level of awareness, and it, meaning that it's not something we're always aware of. And these are all of the things, the memories, the suggestions, the beliefs that you've taken in, the beliefs about yourself, the beliefs about your world, the beliefs about what you can create, who you can become. All of that is what's in your subconscious mind. So as we go deeper into this subconscious mind, we also find all of the beliefs about who you are, what you're able to do, uh, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, what your parents told you, um, what you failed at, what you succeeded at, and what your ultimate decisions were about that when those things happened. So what conclusions did you draw? When we're children, we have something that is completely, um, well, it's wide open. We don't have what's called a critical faculty. And the critical faculty is, is kind of like this filter right that if someone says to you hey you know the sky is green your critical faculty would jump in and say no it's not it's blue so that would not get into your awareness you would just reject that right because the critical faculty is kind of like a wall that says hey not true but when we're very young we have no critical faculty so if someone tells us you're no good or we like you because you're the 
heavier one, or you've got big bones, or you're gonna wind up just like your Aunt Sheila and have X, Y, Z happen. All of this goes in to the mind of that child because there is no critical faculty for it to pretty much bounce off of. There is no um, reality set point. We're just literally completely programmable. And you can look at your life and some of the patterns and the ways that things show up in your life to really understand what your subconscious blocks are. If you're dealing with money challenges over and over again, then you probably don't have the same subconscious belief system as somebody who is like Warren Buffett, who's a billionaire, right? If you have certain issues going on with your relationships, then you may find that there's a pattern that's coming up and you may not have the same belief systems as someone who says or believes, I can always be loved or I can always find love or I can always you know, find wholesome relationships. So whatever we're lacking in our life, if it's something we really want and a pattern keeps showing up, that is an unconscious or subconscious belief, more than likely, that is creating that pattern. Now, how do we change this? What do we do if we're seeing a pattern we don't like? How do we change it? Well, one of the ways is suggestion, you know, continuing to say something, continuing to repeat an affirmation over and over again. Another way is hypnosis. Uh, another way is energy healing or energy transformation work, where you have an experience or a real visceral release of a certain belief or a certain energy that is replaying in your awareness. All of these are ways to do this, but the main thing is you want to be aware of what is going on. Now, I would say, contrary to what most people will say that will tell you, well, once you're aware of a block, it automatically is gone. I don't believe that. I can become aware of let's say a raccoon that's in my yard destroying my fence or destroying my crops, that doesn't make the raccoon no longer you know, come into my yard and cause trouble. Uh, it's not just being aware of it, it's actually removing them, changing them, aligning them. So that deeper work, all of the fruit of what you want is in this subconscious mind. So I would say, be very careful what you say to yourself, you're constantly berating yourself or saying, I'm not good enough, or I always make these kind of mistakes, I'll never have money. We have a friend who, ever since she was like in her mid 40s, was talking about how old she was and seemed to age faster, seemed to have health issues that others didn't have, seemed to always have something going wrong with the body. Literally, it was like she was programming her body to accelerate in age. And I have friends that, you know, they don't count age and they don't talk about themselves as being any age, and it seems like they are just ageless. Now, again, everything's subject to limitations, but there's some amazing powers in our subconscious mind. In fact, here's an interesting study. If you ever, uh, interesting fact, if you ever read the book called The Power of the Subconscious Mind by Dr. Joseph Murphy, he talks about where they literally took a stamp, just a regular old postage stamp, and they told the subjects who were in hypnosis that these postage stamps were little bitty steel plates that were heated up hot red and they were gonna place them on the back of their neck. Now, of course, people didn't like that, but they were able to do this and these were not hot. These were just regular old postage stamps, you know, your regular old stamp. And when they put it on the subject's neck, the necks actually developed blisters. So that, means the subconscious mind has a direct connection to our body, to our systems, and even to what happens in our body. This is why this is a huge area for healing and development. Now, the area that no one seems to talk about very often and few people understand is another interesting connection, and that is the connection between the subconscious mind and the superconscious or innate intelligence or infinite intelligence. What is the connection? Well, the subconscious mind is connected to infinite intelligence because that is how infinite wisdom speaks to us. That's how ideas, that's how awareness, that's how um, unlimited knowing comes into our being. Most people are not tapping into this because they have so many subconscious beliefs. But here's an example as to how someone use the superconscious to get ideas for world-changing inventions. Thomas Edison, I know there's questions about his 
light bulb uh, discovery, so we're not gonna go there. But he would use the superconscious to basically bring in ideas that would help him solve problems that he was looking to solve. Here's how he would do it. If he had an invention or something he was trying to create that wasn't working and there was some area he had to develop to get around it, he basically would sit with the problem in his mind and he would sit in a big chair and he would hold a large ball bearing. And this ball bearing, he would basically rest his arm on the armrest holding the ball bearing and under the ball bearing on the floor, he'd have this big metal bowl. Now, what would happen was he would sit and he would kind of think about the problem until he'd start to doze off. And when he's thinking about the problem, getting sleepy, dozing off, his hand would open up, the ball bearing would fall and it would clang on the metal bowl, waking him up. He believed that in that moment of just barely falling asleep, his mind would break the bonds of this earthly awareness and whatever idea he was working on would drop into the subconscious and would connect to superconscious and then it would come back up as some awareness and insight this is why if you go to bed and you write down a challenge or a question or you're looking for some bit of information or a word or the title to a book or an ending to a story or an idea for a new product and you write it down before you go to bed Usually, okay, eight times out of 10, when you wake up in the morning, you will have ideas. It may not be the answer, but you're gonna have a lot of ideas because your mind is working on it all night. And this is a way that you can actually program yourself to find answers, to find solutions, to find awarenesses that you may be needing in your life. So I'll do more videos on this because it's a fascinating area and there's definitely tons of techniques you can use. But just remember, you are not your day-to-day -day awareness. You're not that part of you that's connecting into all the problems of the world and just kind of going around. You have many more deeper parts and it's understanding these parts, knowing them, and then understanding how to utilize them that allows you to create a really amazing life, allows you to tap in to what we call the you wealth, that inner well-being, the you wealth inside of you that really is your divine birthright. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, uh, hit like, share it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video that I make.